All right, we're going to finish up where I left off. I'm um, sorry for the delay. I had a little bit of a freeze and a water pipe break, so that took up quite a bit of time. So what we'll do is we'll look at the image here, and this heart shape here has got kind of a point on it. And we can make that by, um, as I had to subdivide this in the middle. If I look at this one here, this one don't have it. What I did was um, speed it up. What I do just did is um, I use the ring option then I would use connect and it split it up that's why you see this one like this and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select here and I'll select here and I'm going to select between them and hopefully it, it will go between on this side then I'll kind of scale that out just a little bit and we'll do the same for this other side. I want to start about right here where that one is. And quit where that one's at. And go between it. And I'll scale out with a cube here to get in the front view here. Just take a quick look. Kind of eyeballing this one on the right. Just kind of. Uh, Get them close in range here. Then I will just go ahead and uh, select both of these and subdivide them. And that looks pretty cool there. It's not too bad. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and uh, I guess we can go ahead and by starting to make this band around here it's got a little point to the front here I'm sure it's probably got some points all the way around it got a little point here probably got some in the back and maybe a couple on the side so we'll open this back up and hopefully this will all work here because this is uh, first try on this with no practice so well let's go ahead and scale this down here it's just a little bit too big bring this up just kind of out of the way for now and then we're going to make the headband and we're going to make it straight across for right now we're not going to curve it we're going to start let's say somewhere here tap the space bar and then we're going to validate that then we're going to the vertex modeling then we're going to increase the smoothing to add points okay let's see here All right, let's go ahead and go to uh, selection, one over N. Let's set this to two and see what this does. All right, we'll press apply. Validate that. Now if I pull up, you can see right here, I don't, I probably wanted to go ahead and uh, well, actually, this is what I wanted to do. I got eight. I wanted kind of one in the middle there, so maybe I should just go ahead and maybe add an odd number instead of even. So let's try that again. Selection. One over N. Number two. And press apply or validate. Now I'm going to re invert that selection, invert selection because uh, I don't want to pull in the ends. I just want to pull here like this. And we can do something like, I don't know, this will probably work like that. Now to go into. Uh, mold right here and we're going to grab the cube and drag it down just a little bit then I'll hold the control key and then kind of scale it like this kind of flat and just kind of bring it down like that see when I subdivide it it made a backup curve so I'll just hide that other curve we'll flatten out the Y here Let 
it's going to look something like that. Something close. Also, I will also need a. I'm thinking about adding another band in the inside. So, what I'll need to do is I'll need to go ahead and bring this all down just a little bit. Then, what I'll do is I'll add a band. If I go here and ring this, use connect. I also need to flatten that out. So, we'll loop it at. Throw that out. And we'll just go ahead and get another copy and bring this down a little bit. I will have a center band there when I get ready for it. I'm going to bring this one down a little bit, so I'll use this one here, move edge along. Alright, that looks alright. Um, let's see what else we need. Let's take a look at this picture here. I'm uh, going to need about three poles right here. So I'll go to the this option right here. Select the cylinder. I'm going to make one in the middle. So I'll select here. And I'll bring it up. It's going to look a little extra large here. And uh, I'm going to move the points this way to add them so they look a little bit smoother. And I don't need all the ones going up and down because that's not going to be necessary because I'm not going to be bending it. Once I did do that, I'll just go ahead and kind of scale this down to approximately how I think it should look. Pretty skinny. So we'll scale it down like this and bring it back up like that. And we got two small ones on each side. Control C, Control V. Pull one here. Control V. Put one here. These will probably be a little bit smaller, so what I'll do is just go ahead and delete that one and let me just shrink this one up. The reason why I did, deleted that one there is because uh, I'm going to get a copy of this one here, so I'll have both the same size. I'll bring this one up here. I'm just eyeballing it. I can match the bottom up here pretty good if I want to, but I think. Once I'm close in range, I think it'll be alright. Actually, I'll probably bring it up just a tad higher than the bottom. I'm looking at the bottom right now. And Control C, Control V that, and we'll bring this over to the other side. Another thing while I'm here, I'm just going to go ahead and select both of these and right click and group these. So I'll be able to um, move these around a lot easier. Uh, move them as one object. Um, it looks like it's got some kind of a uh, little design here. I guess I can just throw something in on this real quick. Is uh, go back to lines tool, helix, and uh, we'll bring this helix up. It's approximate there. Add a couple slices, then press apply. Don't validate that. Then when you press apply, it's going to give you an option for the edges. That's why you want to tone this down because you'll get way too many, and you want to just kind of tone this down a little bit. And we'll validate that. And we're going to go ahead and go to vertex modeling, or mean surface modeling, and then use thickness. And I'll give this a little bit of thickness here. And hold the shift key and we'll kind of try snapping it somewhere right here. I need a couple views here to see what I'm doing. Get 
tip this a little bit here so I can see a little bit better. Since I ain't got no end caps on these poles here, it's really hard to see going that way, so I'll just eyeball it. Shouldn't be too hard. We'll make one there. We'll kind of scale that down just a little bit. Bring it over. And we're going to copy this. Control C and Control V. We'll make a small one over here. I'll we'll bunch this one down quite a bit. Control C, Control V, because I want to copy from this new one that I squished down. Okay, so far so good. I want to kind of clean this up here and uh, since I got all these little spring looking things here I want to select them I'm holding the shift key to select them and right click and group these kind of keep some of this stuff organized here we'll select this one hold the shift key select this and group these here these things are starting to get a little full over here so uh, Let's see what else we got next here. Um, made the poles. Maybe we need to make some um, ends with some balls on the top there or something like that. Um, let's see. That would be the lines tool again, I'm sure. And that would be some kind of curly cue. So let's go ahead and do the... I'm going to use this right here. And we use 16 here. And I'll just go ahead and I'm going to chop some of this off here. And I'm going to try keeping this uh, top point here because might chop that one off here but uh select here and tap the space bar about right here and then we'll just go ahead and mirror that to the other side we don't want it to connect there now sometimes this thing will set us connect on the bottom you can see where it's where it shows the blue I can just test it. Let's see here. That's not what I want. I want to just go ahead and get a. What I can do is I'll just go like this. I'll just do it like that. Sometimes it'll say it's showing it's connecting to the top, but it actually will connect to the bottom sometimes. And we'll add some thickness to this one also. I'm not capping the ends on these because um, sometimes they look a lot better when, when they're subdivided when they're not capped. Okay, doesn't look too bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the geometry for right now on the subdivision. And that's going to kind of be where these little balls are at, I guess. So, let's take another look. It's going to be at the top. Something like that. Just eyeballing everything right now, not being too particular. I don't know if that's looking going to look too big or too small. Yeah, it's going to look too big.
probably going to have to do some more tweaking when it's all said and done. Not a problem. Control C, Control V that. Bring this down like this. These will be a little bit smaller than the rest. Since it's that small, Control C, Control V, because we want to copy from that size there. Then we'll hold the shift key and we'll select these. Right click and group. Always good to save your work as you're going. Alright, gonna add a couple balls to this. Or spheres. I'm gonna use this one here. And I'm gonna use the geodesic sphere. Just kind of tone that down. Trying to keep the polygons pretty low here. We'll scale this down here. If I get a top view now, I can kind of see a little bit better. Probably could turn on some transparency to probably help. Like I said, um, this is just tweaking and uh, that'll take a little time. But uh, if I get you in the ballpark here, I think you'd be alright. It looks alright. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, control C, control B. I guess it looks alright. Just kind of using my imagination right now, which I got a good one. Control C, control B. This one will be smaller. Control C, Control B. Control V. Now instead of pressing Control V again, what's going to happen? The manipulator is going to jump way over to the right. While I'm still in this view, I'm just going to get a copy from this position. Control C, Control V. Now why I have to jump all the way across the screen? Control V. Alright, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift click this ball. All the balls are in this direction here. I'm going to right click and group these. Because I might want to position them later and these might be a little bit different too so right click group the section of these. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this stuff out of the scene here that I'm not going to be using. That'll be that one. This is from that old heart scene there. That one there. And let's take a look at this picture real quick. And uh, let me go ahead and I guess uh, I do this curly shape here. I guess uh, I guess I could do this with the um, helix here. Select here. I don't want to go up. I want to just kind of go in with it. And I'm going to press apply. That way we can bring up the edge and we're going to bring this down like this. I'm going to kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess kind of bring it out like that. And the curly cue kind of went down and under. And 
what we're going to do is bring this up probably about right here. Now I might have to do some adjustment. This uh, headband um, might not be long enough. So like I said, I'm kind of doing this uh, first try on this. So might not get 100% accurate. All right, that looks about right. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this one here by using the offset. This is about how thick I want it. And we'll validate it. It's right here. And we'll go to the rule surface and connect these together. Collapse DG on that. And I think I'm going to need to. Uh, I could probably delete that one, delete that one, and just straighten this one out just a little bit, and widen it out a little bit. I, don't know, I guess something like that will work. And then we'll bring this one up here, scale it down. like maybe both these ends got to bring this down a little bit I'm right clicking and dragging I guess something like that will work does look like it's got one on each side so we'll go to the um, mirror option here for the cemetery. What I'm going to have to do is uh, I knew that was going to happen. It's trying to mirror this little line here. I don't know if I recall telling you this before that that's how that thing will screw up on you. So let's go ahead and try that again. side, wrong side, there it goes. And I could probably make another duplicate, control C, control V, and we'll move this down here, make this pretty small, something like this. Control C, control V, just eyeball on it. So just a little bit more. some thickness to some of these here and we'll go into the surface modeling and add some thickness and get rid of this transparency for right now well since these are mirrored one's going in one way and one's going the other way Alright, so what we're going to have to do is abort that. We're going to have to do one set at a time. Validate that. So I 
add some thickness to this. I think it's going to be best to bring this into the poles a little bit. And it's going to be best to go ahead and select all these and we're going to group these. Right click and group. And when I can select them, I can select all of them in movement at once. Alright, that's looking okay. And then we're going to have to unhide the heart. And this will be the biggest one. I kind of thinking I didn't make that long enough, so it'll be all right. It's going to be the biggest one there. Take a double look. That's the hearts below the little two little balls there. Actually, I'm going to put it about right here. Bring it below it right here just a little bit. Actually, I want to kind of blow it quite a bit below it there. Control C and Control V. These are pretty small. Control C, Control V. Shift click, right click and group the root. Alright, we're going to go ahead and make some uh, ends on this right here. Oh, like this. Hold the control key and drag out. Might want to scale this down. This is going to be wrapped around to the back of the head. That's why I didn't know if I had it long enough. But I'm trying to compensate. And uh, by just kind of pulling on it and making some other stuff. Doesn't have to be perfectly designed. Um, another thing is when I subdivide it, it's going to be rounded up. So I need to protect the edges. And I'll do that by looping this, looping it again, and then I'll just go ahead and use the uh, this option to split these here. Let's subdivide that and take a look. Alright, don't look too bad. And of course, anything that we subdivide is going to shrink. Um, now this crown here, uh, can't see it but there's probably there's some ups and downs I don't know if they're smooth or not and another thing I looked at is um, let me take a look at this little line here let's loop this I need to flatten that back out also we'll loop this here and uh, Pull that out just a little bit, then use this little cube. Kind of make this little thing here. Kind of screwed up the edges or the backs, or the the ends I met. Let's see if we can't fix that. So what we'll do is go on um, transparency mode. We're going to select all the edges. 
Let's see if we can select them in that way there. So we can flatten this out again. better all right we're going to need to go ahead and subdivide these here and these will also shrink up when I subdivide it I want these a little bit rounder so let's take a look at this here and, and I'll just go ahead and I think that looks pretty good there and uh, wanna, you can see the ends come out and I want to right here I want to kind of hide them I guess I can kind of scale out just a little bit. Bring that down. Let's go ahead and select this one here. Select this one here. Just trying to hide them. I kind of like that. It looks alright. Alright, when we got this set, we look at this head. Now we got these two hearts here. They look like they're um, very close to the this original one in the front. They're not actually to the way to the side of our head. As far as I can see, they might be, but um, they look pretty close instead of between, um, you know, kind of by the ears and the halfway of the head. So we're just going to leave these kind of close because when I bend this, I think they're going to look a little bit close. So to bend all this to the shape. What we need to do is we need to control A and hope everything works. And when we do that, let me see what this other curve is here. I got hidden first. Yeah, let me get rid of this one here. Control A, and I want to, you know, I want to look down here. Then I'm going to use the weld, and it welded all of them. And you need to weld all that to bend it. And um, for me to bend it, um, I'm assuming we're going to do a, almost like a horseshoe shape. So we will use the um, circle here. And we'll drag out quite big. And we'll go ahead and delete pretty much half of that. Let's not try quite half, but we'll try, let's say that much here. I'm just going to get a copy of this in just in case I need this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth this up here. Alrighty. No geometry. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to see or I'm going to leave that alone and see what's going to happen. All right. Usually I collapse the geometry, but uh, I want to see what's going to happen and uh, maybe it'll work out. So we'll go to the utilities and use this bend option. Now we got the, um, the crown here selected, so we use the bend. And it didn't work out, and it's usually it's because of the trihedron here, and the horseshoe was made in that direction. So we probably need to tip it down like this. So we'll try that again. All right, let's see. Bring this down a little bit here. Ooh, we got, there it is. It's looking good now. Kind of liking it. Like I said, if we wanted to make this a little bit longer, you know, I could have uh, stretched this out. We still can do it here, but I, I think that's how a crown looks in the back. It's got most of it missing. More like a horseshoe shape. And I can add my shading domains or whatever to it. And uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to get 
rid of that curve here. I'm done with it. And it's just tweaking. Um, if you wanted these further apart, you might want to do that before you weld all this. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. I like it. I could probably smooth it up some more with some more subdivision. But I, I actually kind of like that one there. It looks pretty good. And then you can add your new colors and your transparency and... But anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up on this part for the crown. If you got any questions, let me know. I did want to point out one thing real quick. Um, if you ever, you can see it's one object. If you ever decide, hey, this ball here is too big, and how am I going to remove that? I mean, you might have to select everything. Well, all you got to do is just select here, anything on the ball, or any object that I made separate, it could be a ball, the heart, or whatever. And if I select here and hold this shift key down, and then numpad, hold the a plus sign, and go like this. That way I can select it, then I can go to edit, cut, edit, paste. Then I can scale it back down if I decided I wanted a smaller ball. Then if I wanted to weld it back again, then we can use the weld, weld all. And we got it back. That's if you decide that you want to change that ball or anything on it. Because, like I said, you could select here. And when you hold the plus sign down, the shift and plus. It's kind of like uh, each has its own shading domain. But that it's still welded as one. Let me subdivide that see what that looks like. Very nice. It's looking good. I did notice one thing. Um, I didn't have these little beads in the middle. All I did was flatten up some of these spheres here and put these little, um, I guess they're kind of like rubies in it or something. And uh, that's how I added that. And actually I should have done that while everything was all stretched out and all flat before I bended it. But that wasn't a problem. I just eyeballed it and put it in. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, I think this will wrap it up. Alright. Thank you.